<laughs> Hello. Oh, hi there. <laughs> Welcome to our series on Downward Facing Dog. I'm Saffron. And I'm Grafton. <laughs> um, I'm one of the lead trainers at Sargassana, and he is a doctor of physical therapy. And a yoga teacher. And a yoga teacher. And struggling in this double really struggling. dog. So today we're going to look at specifically sciatica as it applies to downward dog and ways to modify your practice if you have sciatica. Yes. So, graphic graph, what is sciatica? Well, sad to sad. Sciatica is an inflammation of the sciatic nerve. Right. What is the sciatic nerve? I'm glad you asked. It's the largest nerve bundle in the entire human body. And it goes from your lower back, uh, gets nerve roots from L4 all the way down to S3, starts in your lower back, goes down here underneath this muscle called the piriformis, which can be problematic, we'll talk about that later, and all the way down behind the knee, splits off into several other nerves, and those nerves continue and travel all the way down underneath the foot. Why do we care? About the side of the nerve? Yes. Well, 20 to 50% of people over the course of their life are going to struggle with um, sciatica, which is basically that big bundle of nerves can become painful and symptomatic. So, what does that feel like? Well, it can feel like a burning or radiating sensation down the back of the leg. Mm. Um, a lot of times, go and turn around, sad to sad. People will experience pain here or here or here or even like behind the ankle on the, on the uh, medial side of the ankle or even on the bottom of the foot so mm -hmm. it can present in many different ways mm -hmm. but one thing that is important for our video today is that this sciatica can be aggravated by the downward facing dog position a favorite yoga pose Sappy sucks, baby. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about how you can uh, kind of figure out if you have some sciatica issues and maybe how to uh, work with those in your downward facing dog position. No more pain in downward dog. No more pain in downward dog. So we've got our all-star yogi, Saffron, here, who today, all of a sudden, just started having some strange symptoms in the back of her leg. <laughs> Could it be sciatica? <laughs> well, if we take this downward facing dog position and we flip it upside down, now you see that she's in a lot of hip flexion here. So hip flexion, ankle dorsiflexion, and knee extension. So, let's do a little experiment. We're gonna take one leg. You don't have to put your hands up over your head. <laughs> Can and you we're just gonna down, down. bring it up like this. And in the physical therapy world, we would call this a straight leg raise. And basically, let me know when this starts to get stretchy. So Saffron, if she was to have sciatica, let me know when it starts to hurt. About there. Okay. So, this is a position of what we call high neural tension, meaning that big giant nerve bundle called the sciatic nerve is really stretched out here. It's stretched out because um, it crosses the hip, the knee, and the ankle. So if we do this, is that better versus? Mm -hmm. Way better. And? That's more. More tension. Yeah. So we can change the tension in the sciatic nerve by moving the ankle. And this is really interesting because a lot of people think that in this position you're stretching your hamstrings. But the actual limiting factor in your range of motion here is generally the sciatic nerve in 90 plus percent of people. So crazy. <laughs> so, so when you feel that tightness back here, that's the sciatic nerve uh, on tension. Now if we go out here, that is that... It's better. Mm -hmm. And what about if we go up here? Mm. It's different. Yeah. So this is a different 
uh, stretch because this is actually stretching the hamstrings muscle. And that's because when we add in the abduction, so we take the hip out like this, now the sciatic nerve isn't on as much tension. So position of neural tension, the maximum position of neural tension would be hip flexion, so hip flexion, knee extension, knee flexion, knee extension, um, ankle dorsiflexion, like this, and then if you wanted to even tension up the nerve more, you could go adduction, and then internal rotation. Ooh. And that would be the maximum position of neural tension. So anything opposite to that would take tension off of the nerve. So um, in downward facing dog, you're in a position of a lot of neural tension. Generally, that stretch that you feel behind your leg is not going to be your hamstrings. It's more likely to be your sciatic nerve. If you have a hot sciatic nerve or you have some sciatica-like symptoms uh, or ridiculous symptoms going down your leg, which ridiculous symptoms and sciatica kind of get blanketed under the same term, which is sciatica for most people. Um, if that's the case, then there's some things that you can do in downward facing dog using these concepts of neural tension to uh, modify the pose, modify your uh, your uh, participation in the downward facing dog pose during your yoga practice in order to um, kind of help with that and uh, allow you to continue your yoga practice, continue to improve, and even get the sciatica better over time as opposed to making it worse by continuing to just do push into, push into your downward facing dog. Another thing that's really important to understand with uh, these kinds of symptoms, the sciatica-like symptoms, is that a lot of times you might not feel it so much while you're in downward facing dog or while you're doing your yoga practice and you'll go home and that night you'll lay down and you go to sleep and all of a sudden the back of your leg will have this kind of like burning or even uh, achy or kind of shooting pain down the back of your leg. So, um, so we'll talk about um, some of the different uh, modifications that you can make if this is something that, you're, that has been an issue for you in the past. Um, to kind of use your yoga practice as a way to get healthier and stronger as Yay. opposed to aggravating your issue. Yay! Okay, so here we have our super yogi graphy graph here practicing a beautiful downward dog when all of a sudden he is struck by sciatica. Oh! No! Oh. No! Oh! And, and so he starts to adjust. Oh no! So he's rounded his lower back here, trying to protect him, his pain. And so in downward dog, we really want to try to get this nice long spine. So we'll try to help Grafton find that with a few modifications. Whoa. So I'll say, okay, Grafton, can you take your feet a little bit wider? Yeah. And see if he can find a little bit more straightness here in his lower back. How does that feel? Well, that's better. Awesome. Second thing we can try is having him bend his knees. And this can be with wide legs or with legs together. So then he can get a little bit more straightness. And we can say lift your heels as well. So we loosen up the tension on that nerve with the knees bent. And then finally to start to glide the nerve, which is actually a great little treatment for this, he can bend into one knee and the other. Lifting up the heel, yes. So this is a nice little glide. Sliding and gliding the nerves Sliding through the tissues. Sliding the nerves. Sliding and gliding. So that is how we can help our downward dog be nicer to our sciatica. Hello. Hello. So these are a few exercises you can do to prepare your sciatic nerve for your downward dog. Yep. <laughs> so first, we're going to try to uh, loosen up some of the tissues that the sciatic nerve passes under or passes through so that we can get that nerve a sliding and glide. Sliding and glide. Yeah. So um, the first place we're gonna start is a, a muscle called the piriformis. So it attaches from the sacrum to the hip and, or to the femur over here. And uh, it's right about in this area. So what we can do to try to release that the, the sciatic nerve passes right underneath it, so kind of a close quarters kind of area, an area that can get a little sticky for that big uh, sciatic nerve. 
So what we can do is kind of uh, just randomly putting a ball on your butt. <laughs> we can grab a yoga block, grab a ball. Could be a lacrosse ball, could be a tennis ball, could be a, I think this is a racquetball. Mm -hmm. Racquetball, racquetball probably less than ideal. Uh, lacrosse ball. ball. Yeah. Um, so you're going to sit on this ball, Saffron, uh, right on the area where I was pointing out so gracefully on the video, mm -hmm. the uh, piriformis area. Ooh. And um, you can kind of do a couple, couple different movements. You can sort of roll back and forth. You don't have to be, you know, moving like all crazy. You just kind of have to get a little pressure on one spot, move it over a little bit to a different spot. Just kind of in that general area of the piriformis, you can, yeah, you can bring your leg up externally, internally rotate your hip. Roll back and forth a little bit. And uh, that should be a good start for uh, loosening up the, uh, the pure points. Right. Yeah. So, some trial and error here. You can try this out, see if it helps with your downward facing dog, see if it's a little bit easier to get into that position and it doesn't light up your sciatic nerve as much. Yep. So, the next thing we can try for our sciatic preparation before downward dog is releasing the hamstrings muscles. So the sciatic nerve passes through the hamstrings muscles and can get a little bit stuck in there. So just like we did with the ball on my piriformis, we can do with the ball on Grafton's hamstrings. So Grafton, will you take these two blocks, this ball, and will you put the ball right in between your hamstrings? Sure, be happy to. Right there at the top, you'd like attachment point, yeah? Yeah, so the origin is up on the, um, the pelvic, uh, the pelvis. So right below the, uh, the sit bone there. And so you can start there. Then you can bend and straighten the leg. You can also do this on a chair. It's a little easier if you have a chair. chair. Um, you can do a little nerve floss in here. Just bending and straightening your ankle, bending and straightening your knee. What about externally and internally rotating? You can do that too. Yeah. Feels good. And then, you know, you can also work your way down the hamstrings. So, go a little bit more distal, down towards the knee. Mm -hmm. And you can even go... Yeah, sliding and gliding. And you can go right under the knee too. So I'll be back. Right here. So awesome. Yeah. And that is how we release the hamstrings. So the last place that we can try here to um, get that side of your gliding and sliding a little bit better is uh, by loosening up the hip joint itself. So sometimes in the capsular tissue, uh, the sciatic nerve, it's possible that the sciatic nerve gets a little bit uh, kind of adhered to some of those tissues in the hip capsule or the ligaments, uh, the connective tissue around the hip, so that when you go into hip flexion, it winds up that sciatic nerve with the, uh, the hip tissue. So what you wanna do is loosen up that hip joint a great way to do that is if you have a partner, there's a couple ways to do it. If you have a partner, you can actually go into the downward facing dog position and just have your partner kind of like pull back on your hip. This feels pretty good too, so it's kind of a nice thing to do. Uh, you could kind of go out to the side here. And you go back this way. And if you want, you can pedal your knees out while I'm pulling here. Now, if you don't have a partner, because you have no friends, <laughs> Damn it. Uh, then you can use a band like this, a big, uh, thick rubber band, and you can attach it to an a anchor point, and then you can just wrap the band around your leg, put some, kind of crawl it out so there's some tension on the band, 
and then go down into the downward facing dog position and work those different angles and stuff that we were talking about. So awesome. If uh, you as a yogi are struggling with sciatica or as a yoga teacher, one of your students is st struggling with sciatica, uh, this is what not to do. Don't do it. So <laughs> if you have a student struggling with sciatica, you might not want to do this adjustment. Oh. <laughs> that might not feel so good. You might not want to do this adjustment. That yeah. might not also feel so good. Not. And pushing the heels down, pulling the leg out like this, probably not the best yeah. idea. Yeah. And worst of all, trying to get the heels and the knees <laughs> back like this, and then maybe using a leg to push down on their back. Also not great adjustment.